Welcome back to Carnegie's.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, How to Write a Philosophy Paper. In this video, we're going to be looking at doing research, specifically for philosophy. Now, philosophy research doesn't require a lab, just a library and possibly a JSTOR subscription. Unlike other disciplines, you're generally not measured by the number of sources that you reference, but rather by the quality of those sources. It's better to have a couple good articles that you really engage with and that really engage with each other on your topic than to have 20 that are talking past each other and may not actually reference what you want to talk about. There are a range of places to start researching a topic in philosophy. Encyclopedias of philosophy are some of the best places to start as, they're often, as they often will outline the top literature on a subject. That is, if your subject is widely enough studied to have an entry in a philosophy encyclopedia. I would recommend the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. It's a well-respected, up-to-date, free online source. The Internet Encyclopedia of Philosophy is often easier to understand, but is not as high quality. I would avoid citing these sources in a paper, but they can provide a good background on the subject, and the sources and the references, particularly in the SEP, are generally some of the most recent or significant works on the topic. So they're a great starting place to find some of those sources. And the SEP usually does a pretty good job of outlining the back and forth of which philosophers hold which positions so that you can then look up more articles and more works by those specific philosophers to better understand the topic. If you're outlining a single argument, usually you're looking for the first person to offer that argument at least in that format, formulation. Philosophies and psych, uh, philosophy encyclopedias can be a good reference to find this information, as well as the most substantial interlocutors, so whoever has objected and had the most sticking power. However, for more esoteric topics or debates, the reference section of the most recent papers on those topics are the best places to look. Start with a recent paper on the topic, or start with that one paper that inspired you to start thinking about the topic. And then check all of the references that you think are relevant to your topic. In those references, read through them, see if they're actually relevant. Once you figure out that they're actually relevant, go into their references. Find the references that you think would be relevant and make another list. Keep repeating this until you feel like you have a good corpus of work and until you feel like you've worked your way back in time to the starting point of whatever that specific discussion you're talking about is. These sources are guaranteed to be in conversation with each other to a certain degree because they are referencing each other. And if you have high enough quality sources to begin with, those sources will be talking about and referencing the top authors in that sphere. This process will also help you figure out which sources are more cited and are more broadly cited by the most of the literature, and which may be more tangential and only cited by one or two papers. If you go through three or four sources and they're all citing one other source, that other source is probably pretty significant. If you've gone through 10 or 20 papers and you found that this one source that you thought was significant is only cited by one paper, it might be more tangential. That doesn't mean you don't you have to exclude it completely if you think it's important to your topic or your debate. But you may have to understand that you may need to explain or describe it a little bit more because it's not as well known or well referenced within the literature. The amount of research you are doing will also depend on how long your paper needs to be. If you're just focusing on a single argument, you may not want to get that many more primary sources, but rather may focus on some secondary sources. How have others interpreted this argument in the past? Even if you don't end up referencing those secondary sources in your paper, they can be helpful to make sure that your interpretations of an argument are correct, particularly if that argument is old, from antiquity, um, and some of the words that they're using may not perfectly map onto the way we use those words right now. Though you should make sure that the secondary sources you're using are high quality enough that they're actually giving you a good interpretation of the argument. Unless your paper is about interpretations of arguments, which you can have philosophy papers on and we'll have that in a video, you probably don't want to mention those secondary sources too much in your paper itself. You want to focus on what your interpretation of the argument is. Now, that can be 
supplemented by and helped by looking at four or five different secondary sources and saying, well, these three agree pretty strongly on what the argument's saying. This other one, it says something different. And so probably that other one, it may be not as reputable of a source. Once you have a lot of sources, you should focus on paring them down to the most relevant to your topic. Those that originated an argument or position or that you're engaging with and those that offer the strongest arguments, especially those that offer the strongest arguments against your position, whatever position you're going to take. For short papers, focus on really understanding the one or two arguments you're summarizing by reading some secondary sources. For longer papers, make sure that you have authors that are either directly in conversation or close enough that you can put them in conversation in the paper. For particularly long papers, make sure that you're summarizing the whole scope of the research that's out there by doing something like a systematic literature review, as opposed to just picking and cherry picking a couple sources. But that's going to depend on how broad your topic is. If your topic's very specific and very perhaps new, if you're doing something like internet ethics, things like that, there may not be that much research out there on it. If your topic's very broad, something like free will, you're not going to be able to summarize every single source in the world, but focus on those that are really relevant to what you're talking about. Once you have the papers and arguments that you want to reference in the paper, you are ready to summarize these arguments in your paper. In the next video, we're going to discuss how to summarize a single argument, and in a later video, we'll look at how to put several papers in conversation with each other. So next up, we're going to be doing summarizing an argument. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org, and stay skeptical, everybody.